Hello and welcome to Organic Chemistry. This is part one of an overview of chapter one in your textbook. Copies of these slides that I'm talking about uh, can be found in a separate file. It's a PDF file. And these correspond to slides I typically show in my face-to-face -face classes. And I just wanted to kind of hit some highlights here, uh, not go through all of these individually. Most of them I think are kind of self-explanatory in terms of what they're trying to tell you. But I just want to give an overview here. And what I don't finish in this first five minutes uh, will appear in a second little miniature video uh, alongside this one. Uh, you may find it useful to access these slides in that PDF file to have in front of you while I'm talking about them. And all of this stuff that is mentioned here is in greater detail in your textbook, of course, so you are certainly encouraged to read all about that. Uh, this first slide defines what organic chemistry is. Um, nowadays, it's just a matter of if it has carbon, it is organic. In the old days, organic meant that it would come from something that was living or had once lived, from a plant, a tree, a human, or an animal. And it was long thought that the only way you could get organic chemicals was to take them from one of these living organisms. But what this slide refers to is an experiment back in 1828 in which an inorganic substance, ammonium cyanate, was heated and transformed into urea, which was already known to be organic. It's one of the components of urine, which is kind of where it gets its name. Um, and so it was really just a matter of how atoms were connected as to whether or not they could be classified as organic. And things like urea can be made in a laboratory from scratch, or it can be isolated, certainly, from uh, living creatures as well. A lot of organic does, uh, a lot of organic chemistry does focus on the types of compounds that are in living systems because they are of interest to us. But on the other hand, uh, pretty much if it's got carbon, it's organic regardless of its source. Um, so that's kind of be the definition we go by. Um, <clears throat> this next slide refers you to the first 10 sections of chapter 1. There's a lot of stuff in here that's background that comes from general chemistry about bonding, especially covalent bonding between atoms. And so your book does a good job of reviewing that, but it uh, is assumed that you've got a handle on all of this material before we move forward into, sec into chapters 2 and 3 and, and so on. This title here, Structure Determines Properties, that really is the motto of organic chemistry. Over and over we're going to be seeing how atoms are connected in molecules and paying attention to such things uh, because whether something's good for you, bad for you, whether it's helpful or toxic or neither one, everything is determined by what atoms are present and how they are interconnected. So we're going to be spending some time just dealing with those interconnections and talking about how we represent those on paper. So like a lot of subjects, organic chemistry has a language of its own and symbolism that we will want to get familiar with. Uh, these next slides talk about the beginnings of covalent bonds. When nonmetals hook themselves to one another, they share pairs of electrons. And some of this stuff, as it says here, goes back 200 years or more. Uh, so I'm really trying to catch you up on the last couple of hundred years worth of chemical science here, at least in the first uh, chapter or two. Uh, this first chapter talks a lot about valence electrons and atoms how it refers to the outer energy electrons and again your textbook goes into more detail than I will here but that's uh, our starting point because in any atom it's those outer electrons that are responsible for the bonds that take place uh, for sodium it's not so important that that we keep up with all 11 of its electrons it's really that only single electron on that third energy level that's important We'll see a lot of oxygen as we go along, and for oxygen, it's those last six electrons that matter there. And for pretty much every element we see in organic chemistry, it's going to come from one of these groups with the blue arrows, so that, as it says, the group number automatically gives us a handle on how many valence electrons uh, a given atom would possess. We'll talk more about this in the uh, part two video here. Stay tuned. 